Hi, welcome back to the channel. This is another video in my series for Vampire Rivals, the card game from Renegade Games. In these videos, I'm talking about the lore behind the clans. And I'm going to try and keep it relevant to the cards. And maybe talk about some rules to do with the cards, how that works with lore. Maybe some of the things in lore that you might see in the future coming into cards. So today, it's all about Clan Bruya. Bruya or Bruja or Bruja. I've heard it pronounced many different ways for years. I used to say Bruja, but of late I've been calling them Bruja. Quite like the way Bruja sounds. Uh, I think it comes from Spanish for witch. But anyway, let's focus on the clan regardless of what they call clan, clan Bruja. The clan Bruja are called rabble by other clans. They are factitious and love to build up structures to see them pulled apart. They are zealots and rabble rousers. In modern knights, they align primarily with the Anarch movement. The, they as a clan do tend to coalesce around charismatic leaders and whilst in fight, do tend to stand together against external threats. A classic me versus my brother, me and my brother against the world. So there used to be one of the clans within the Camarilla. And as part of the V5 refresh of the background, the Bruja have generally left the Camarilla. Now, of course, there's still someone that remain within the Camarilla, but they've generally left the Camarilla to join the Anarch movement. And this occurred, was sparked off by Archon Theo Bell taking down the Ventru Hardestadt at the convention in Prague in 2012. Now let's talk about the clan weakness. So every clan gains a weakness from the antediluvian. This is called a bane in V5. And the bane, the weakness of the Bruars influence them greatly. They are quick to anger. Each vampire internally has their human thoughts and feelings, their humanity and the beast within the vampiric drive for blood. This expresses itself in, in frenzies, and this can be a fear frenzy where they try and flee from the traditional things that may cause a vampire final death, for example, fire or the sun. Or it could be a fight frenzy where they wish to tear everything apart. I mention this because the Bruja have more difficulty than other vampires in keeping their frenzy in check, their fight frenzy. Now, the history of the, the Bruja. And in the past, they were considered warrior philosophers. In ancient times, they coalesced in Carthage and had great influence on that city. It'd be worthwhile noting that in, in mortal days, uh, mod, mortal days, modern days, uh, vampires don't rule directly, but through agents and proxies. Now in Carthage, this was different. The Bruja are meant to have ruled in a utopia side by side with mortals. Now eventually this meant they came into conflict with Rome. And the Malkavians and the Ventru of Rome went to war with the Bruja of Carthage. As we know Carthage lost, the Bruja lost. And not just their major power base at the time, but considering it was considered a vampiric paradise where mortals and vampires coexisted together, they, left, they, they felt aggrieved and lost more than just things were lost. The venture actually went so far as to salt the earth for those vampires in torpor, meaning that they couldn't rise again. The Bruja have the long memories and have always nipped at the Ventru over Carthage. Remember Carthage almost as often said as Cato the Elder would say and furthermore Carthage must be destroyed in the Roman Senate. Now during the Dark Ages, the Dark Ages was its own product line for Vampire which explored sort of the early Middle Ages and in the Dark Ages the Bruar were considered a high clan so in modern nights, considered one of the lower clans. In the Dark Ages, their warrior for warrior scholars 
were held them above, say, the Nosferatu, the Malkavians, Ravnos, who were considered lower in status and standing than the educated and refined clans. Bruja have always been drawn towards radical knowledge, and it was during this time that the first Anak revolt happened. The Bruja elders ensured the clan would join the Camarilla. However, the Bruja had been a force in the Anarchs. So you can imagine radicalism and rabble rousing, and a lot of Bruja did side with the Anarchs against the elders. There's a lot. I mention and talk about the Anak revolt a lot in my video on the tradition. So if you want to know more about that and how the Camarilla was formed and how the Anak revolt created the traditions, check that video out. If I was really good at this YouTube thing, I'd put like, oh, there's a link to click on. And it's worth noting, however, that the, uh, the Anarchs were considered a part uh, a part of the Camarilla, but almost separate to the Camarilla up until the modern nights, up until Archon Theo Bell did his thing and, and took out Hardestat the Elder. In modern nights, as it says, the bulk of the clan reside within the Anak movement, though there are still members from the Camarilla. The stereotypical Bruja is the street, tough punks and rebels in society. I mean, even looking at the, the artwork here, what what we see is maybe some of the older vampires in the suits. Well, not quite a suit, but dressed smartly compared with the kind of street clothing of the rest of the clan. The Camarilla is the most powerful collection of vampires in the world, and it's a feudal arrangement both for princes who rule as lords with power and life of death overall within the domains, and elder vampires that wield influence built up over centuries. It's a political dance, macabre, and it's very stagnant. And it's against that that the Anax and the Bruja revolted. Internally, the clan is kind of split along into a couple of different types. So there are the iconoclasts and the idealists and the individualists. The individualists kind of don't get too much of a mention these days. But the idealists are those they're always thinking back towards those perfect societies. They tend to be intellectuals and theorists. Then the iconoclasts, these are the Bruja you're more likely to meet, and they're younger and angrier, with li links to street gangs, thugs. Uh, interesting enough, in Kindred the Embrace TV series, if you're fortunate enough to have watched that or get hold of a copy, I really liked it. It has mixed reactions. I'll say generously in the vampire fandom. Uh, the Bru the Bruja are represented as, as being kind of into unions and organized crimes, and I felt the gangrel looked more like the Bruja, the way that White Wolf created the Bruja to be kind of street gangs and uh, biker folks. However, I always think of the Bruja in terms of the Lost Boys. So the, the actual gang of the younger vampires. Uh, uh, by, led by Keir Sutherland is uh, kind of like an iconoclastic gang of vampires and their sire, their creator Max, I believe he's called uh, he's he's the idealist kind of sitting back and uh, looking after his boys so to speak so I expect to see the Bruja amongst the people on the streets agitating against the man Bruja also tend to work closely together and generally, if you have beef with one Bruja, you have beef with the clan. Now, they regularly meet in uh, meetings called rants. And rants are meetings which take the form of a debate that can include much shouting and occasional violence and uh, fights as the beasts slip their leashes. Then that's always followed by a rave, which is a party for the uh, clan to get over any disagreements and soreness they might have had from the rants. So let's look at the vampire clan disciplines. So they have celerity, the lightning bolt, which is supernatural speed. Potence, the fist, and that is supernatural strength. And presence, the power of charisma and fear, and that's the starburst. The combination of potence and celerity give the clan exceptional combat prowess. They may not have the supernatural resilience, that say the 
Ventru have a fortitude, but when they hit, they hit like a steam train. And presence allows them to control street gangs, be leaders, influence people. The clan in the game. So at the moment, the clan seems to be about all aggro all the time. They are the clan at the moment. If you want to go out and kick some ass on the streets, that's the brew half for you. So a lot of extra damage, range attacks, kill functions. And this is before from the art, you could see strong street gang aesthetics. I'm probably going to say this every time I look at the vampires. I never liked Drew Tucker's ability to draw people back when he did Vitez art back in the day. I think he does some excellent art for events and stuff, but I, I think if when Drew Tucker draws vampires, he always... Yeah, I, I just don't like it. Um, if I ever win a Prince of the City event, please... Doubtful. But if I ever do, please don't let Drew Tucker be the artist. But anyway... So, the clan, the clan again, so aggro all the time. Outside of physical attacks, though, presence allows you to splash some interesting and possibly une unexpected influence actions, take some titles, interfere with some schemes. Now, she's not here because she's currently been taken out to go into my Toreador scheme deck but flick the vampire is a great example of that but even if you look at this fighting obviously blocks 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 attacker so it's a an attacking card intel versus a four so fighting 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 there you go that's a brew half for you on the street fighting all the time so where can this clan go what is it about background and stuff? Where might we see the clan one? Obviously, if there are some stuff to do with the Anak movement, the Bruja will have a lot of cards and power and interactions with that. We might see some cards based around specific clan events, such as a rant or a rave. I would make rant be something like game one influence for each Bruja you had as a range of strategy. And rave would be something to do with a group mend. Because generally there will be lots of mortals to feed from at a rave. And you might see uh, if you've, as you've got animals you can recruit with your animalism, you might get some Bruja retainers you can recruit in your deck, which are based around street gangs. Another interesting space to go would be for some specific clan combination powers. So I said before, you've got iconoclasts, idealists, and individualists. So iconoclasts gain a strike called Burning Wrath, which would be a way to gain aggravated attacks. So I would make it Bruja only. You think it's celerity importance, a combination of those two, and it would make that vampire's attacks... Uh, aggravated for that turn. Uh, idealists gain an attack called Scourge of Electro and this allows you to awaken the beast in an enemy vampire, a poison vampire, and cause damage as a beast attempts to plot its way out and that vampire rips, like internally has to deal with that. Can't remember the discipline spread but again I'd make it Bruja and I think it might be celerity and presence based. So have those two as a combination power. And finally, there's a third Bruja power called Iron Heart, which would be some sort of reaction that gives you shields in social or mental attacks. It makes it harder for presence and dominate to work on you. So that's a that's my quick overview of Bruja. Could be a bit of a history, the Dark Ages who they are in the modern night, a bit of Bruja culture. Talked about what the clan's looking like in the game at the moment and where it can go. Obviously, there's loads of great content out there if you want to deep dive into the lore. I'm just trying to do a bit of a enough to understand the game a bit more. Maybe titillate you into hunting down some vampire lore itself. 
So again, if you've got any thoughts, questions, or anything you think I've missed, which is dead obvious from the brew eye that you'd, you'd like to mention, stick, a, stick it in the comments section. Always love talking about my hobbies. So until then, to wrap off, I'll leave you with one of my favourite quotes. And this is from the signature Bruja, that all-round badass Theo Bell. And Theo Bell has to say, the world's turning to shit, but we've got a job to do. And on that note, you have a great night. Good night.